Welcome everyone to uh, West Orlando WordPress. My name is Rob Watson, and uh, that's Hope Worley over Hi. there, and that's Brian <laughs> Walton. So we're kind of the Karen Green. Uh, we're all kind of the organizers of this of this little troop here. <laughs> so we're kind of an adjunct group to the uh, Orlando WordPress group. Uh, we're just kind of serving the western suburbs. So that's that's our our role here. Um, so we're, today we're going to do a presentation. We do have um, a follow-along link here at the bottom that we'll, you know, we'll publish out to the, uh, to the group, to the meetup group later on. So you'll be able to click on that and go back to the slides if you have any need for review. Um, we try to keep everything as open as possible. Any questions? Um, do you want to save questions till the end? Or? I think with this small of a group, we'll do them as we go. Do them as we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just have a mic in the middle there. It should pick up everybody's voice. Uh, it should be fine. So we can just keep it at normal volume and we'll it. Um, so today, I'm just going to switch over to this side so I can run the, come on, let's advance the slide, shall we? All right, so today we have Karen Green. Um, I've put her title as Fiber Arts Blogger. That works. <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> um, so she is going to speak to us today. I'll let her kind of introduce what she does, but she's uh, she's been a part of the group for, I think, nine months? Something like that. Yeah, so... Uh, we started last uh, November, not this last, but in November 2018. So we've been at this for a little over a year now, and uh, Karen's been along for the ride for quite a while. Um, so she's going to walk us through a um, presentation on building with blocks. Plugins make it possible. So we'll go ahead and turn the time over to you for that. All right. Does the remote work for the computer? Um, no, you'll have to. Okay, so the arrows? Just the arrows should do it, yeah. Back okay. There. Um, so I first started using WordPress in 2013. I was going through a really hard time and I needed to do something positive and productive, so I decided I was going to start blogging and I was going to blog about fiber arts. At the time that I started, I only knew how to knit, but I very quickly over the next couple of years learned to crochet and spin and weave cloth and baskets and dye and even scour fleece. And I traveled all over taking classes, <coughs> excuse me, taking classes and even visited a few farms. <laughs> that poor little guy got separated from his mama, so we were carrying him back to be with her. <laughs> um, and then I, I joined some guilds and other groups, and about a year and a half ago, I accepted a position as technology chair for the Florida Tropical Weavers Guild, which is a statewide guild. <clears throat> the position was newly created, and the job was to, is the website and online registration for their annual conference. They had somebody who was doing the website before, but when I got it, it looked like this. And so I'm not a technical person. When I, all of my blogging, I like threw a theme at it, made a few modifications and just kept going. So when I started working on this website, that is what I did. I threw a theme at it and just, just went with making a few modifications in the theme. But there was a lot more that they wanted to do. And I knew that I was going to need to learn a lot in order to do what they want to do with the website. And that's when I started coming to in-person meetup groups for WordPress because I wasn't even sure exactly what it was I needed to learn. <laughs> I was, I have, I never have coded anything. I don't know any of the program, uh, programming languages that you use for websites. Um, and I was at first thinking, okay, I'm gonna have to learn to code. Um, and so I spent a couple of months I went going to meetings here, going to the Orlando WordPress group, going to WordCamp and Florida BlogCon and online classes and reading books. And finally, I decided that where I was going to spend my time was in blocks. And so because that to me is clearly where WordPress is going. And so I redid this website again. And this time I did it entirely with blocks. And this is what the home, this is the entire home page now. They wanted a very simple home page. So most of the examples you're going to see tonight are from this website, and I'm, I'm going to talk you through the process. Um, you'll see a, a few things from my personal blog too. 
So this is where we're going. I'm going to talk a little bit about the block editor, give you an overview. Then I'm going to get into plugins, what they're capable of and when and why you might use them. Um, and then we're going to talk about reusable blocks. I cannot have done what I did with this website without reusable blocks. And then if you're going to be using blocks, you need a way to keep track of them all and manage them. So I'll give you some overview of the options for that. So we'll start by doing an overview of the editor. Just as a reminder, I don't know how long you have all been using WordPress, but this is the classic editor. This was what WordPress looked like for a long time. All of your content is in one block as you're working on the post. You've got above here, you have your little uh, ways to manipulate text and all of that. It's all in like one place. If you're going to edit it, when you click on it, you're just clicking, well, wrong button. Okay, where to go? Hmm. All right, right here you can see my, my uh, cursor. So where I clicked in it, it's just in the middle of the content. This is not what the block editor looks like. It looks different. So this is what the block editor looks like here. You don't have any of those buttons anymore to manipulate text. Um, you don't have any of, you don't have a toolbar up here. Well, you have a toolbar, but there's small and there's much different tools in it. And if you click on something to edit it, it's going to highlight just that one piece. Each thing on your, in your post is in its own separate block and that you can manipulate those blocks individually. The block editor is not Gutenberg. They are not identical. Gutenberg was the code name for the block editor when the project was in development. And now that the block editor has been released into the core WordPress product, Gutenberg is a plugin and it has experimental features in it. So it's things they're working on, things they want to release into the block editor, but that aren't live in the code yet. So you can install that plugin on, your, on a site, probably a development site, probably not a live site, so that you can play around and see what features are coming. But a lot of people refer to Gutenberg, uh, to the block editor as Gutenberg, because that was the project name when it was in development but they are not identical. And so sometimes um, if people, if you look at the plugin, people sometimes say things about how stuff isn't working. Well, of course it's not working, right? This is code that's still in development. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. The block editor is not exactly a page builder, not yet anyways. It's clearly, I think, where they're trying to go, um, but it does not have the full features that you might expect in a, in, a, in a page builder. I haven't personally used a page builder. I've only like seen presentations and stuff on them, but Gutenberg, I mean, the block editor is not exactly drag and drop. Um, and it doesn't have the same um, experience of, or features, full features yet that you might expect in a page, in a page builder, but it's, it's a, like a baby page builder, maybe. When you're in a post and you wanna add a block into your post, anywhere that you see a plus sign, you can click on that to add a, add a block. So here, in, this is the upper left-hand corner toolbar. So there's a plus sign up there. But also when you're actually in your um, post, every block has a plus sign at the top, like I'm showing here. It also will have a plus sign at the bottom you have to hover over that part of the block in order for that plus sign to show up. But when you click on that plus sign, then you get your menu here of all of the blocks you could potentially add. So you can see they're in categories. Um, Cadence is one of the plugins, but common blocks is native to the uh, WordPress block editor. So you, when you expand the menu, you then have all of the options that are available in that section. Click on the one you want, and that's you get that block in your post. Jared, excuse me, I have a quick basic question. Yeah. Is block editor already in my WordPress? Is it a plugin yes. I have to add in? No, it is automatically in your WordPress. Um, 
I'm trying to remember because I've been using it for so long now. Because if you are you at this point only using classic? Yeah, and I had and I tried Gutenberg for like an hour and I got so confused. <laughs> Never yes. I know how to do it in class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Um, yeah, you, um, I believe it's, I don't have it on this menu. Um, let's see. So over there, those three little dots on the right-hand side, somewhere in there, there's a setting for you to be able to switch to block editor for your, for that post. It looks a lot like when I was playing with Squarespace, mm -hmm. used very much the blocks, and when you click mm -hmm. over, hovered over it, other things show. Right. Yeah, I haven't used Squarespace, but yeah, that is that is what you're describing is what the experience is like. Yes. Wasn't there a point where it was all classic, and then you had to do a plug-in to get the classic back? You do currently have to do a plug-in. Everybody and yes. the block. Yes. But that was that. Where did the plugin? So the plugin I mean, the still plugin exists. It's not blocked. Yeah, no the classic plugin still exists, and I'm actually going to show that to you in a little bit later in the presentation, um, because there are some uses for it. Even if you're going to be using the block editor, there are some instances where that plugin is useful, and I actually have it installed on a couple of my blogs. Um, but my understanding is that WordPress wants classic to basically go away after December of, I'm not sure if it's this year or next, um, but the plugin will still be there. So having it as a, an option actually, like you're still using classic on your blog, isn't going to be an option at some point, but the plugin will still be there. So um, if you decide you want to, but I really like I, I hope that I can convince you all to love the block editor because I really love it. <laughs> so once, when you have placed a block, you can, if you've picked the wrong type, like you've put it as a paragraph, but you really need it to be a heading, you can transform it. So the menu that appears at the top of your block, that little, little like recycling type of symbol is the transform symbol. If you click on that, it then gives you a menu of the options that you can transform that particular block to. And that's going to depend in part on what kind of block it was originally. You're not going to be able to change an image block to a paragraph, right? That doesn't make sense. So they're only going to give you options here that are, that are possible um, for you. So it's not like the full group, but you can transform it within uh, limits if you need to. Oh, I wrote Gutenberg up there. This is the block editor, not Gutenberg. I make, see, I make this mistake too. <laughs> this is one of the cool things that I, uh, that I really like is some of the information you can get on the block editor. So this again is the menu that's on the top left. When you're in a post, the little I information button gives you this, this information, the words, the headings, the paragraphs, the total number of blocks that are in your post. It also gives you this outline. I don't have a lot of headings in the particular post that I'm showing here, but it would give you every heading. You can click on those to navigate to them if you want. Now the other little, the other feature that I'm showing over on the right hand side is when you click on this, the three um, the outline thing, and this gives you a list of every single block that you have in your pro in your poster page. And if you, again, if you click on that, it'll bring you to that point in your post and page. So it helps you navigate, and it helps you to see how you have um, out what the progression is through your post. I think the, both of those are really cool. Uh, is there a reason why there's paragraph paragraph? Yes, because that's what how. I wrote this post. You're about to see the post on the next okay. slide, but um, each paragraph is in fact a separate block. Oh, okay. So every time you hit enter, so <clears throat> when you are typing just paragraphs, you don't have to like click the plus and add it every time. You can just hit enter. It'll automatically make a paragraph block for you. And just so you can just keep typing. Um, and so if you need them to be in the same block, you can do that. You have to like shift enter rather than just hit enter. Um, but that's why that is like that. It'll automatically make each paragraph a separate block. So this is actually the po post that that information was on. Um, 
this is this post is actually in classic view. It's something that I wrote before the block editor was released. Okay, so you can convert your posts that are in classic format. You can convert them to be in a block format. To do that, you click on those three little dots that's right at the top of your post. <coughs> well, actually, before you do that, on your right hand. Uh, margin. This is the menu that's on the right, like where you click publish and all of that. Down here it says editor, switch to block editor. That's going to do it for this post only. Um, once you do that, all of your content is switched from a classic view to a view that is a block, but the entire post is in a single block, right? So each paragraph right now and each image is not in a separate block yet. You, that's the next step that you have to do. So you click on those three little dots um, that are right at the top there and then click here, convert to blocks. And once you do that, now if I click on the paragraph, that paragraph is now a block. The, now, sometimes this does some weird things. It has not, I have never had a problem with it displaying correctly, but sometimes, um, I'll have a quote and it'll make it an HTML block rather than making it a quote block. It still displays correctly. It just isn't what I would have chosen as the block if I were doing that. So I am not, I haven't been stressing about that because it displays the post correctly. So I don't really care too much. Um, but it, that, but that's how you transform from the classic view to that. These are the two plugins. So this is the classic editor plugin, and this is the Gutenberg plugin um, that you can install. The number of stars. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And you know, this is what I was saying because, and one of the reasons for that is I think that people don't realize that the Gutenberg plugin is experimental code, and it's not really meant for live production at this point. They think that it is the block editor, and that, so there's some confusion there. And so I think some of that has to do with people's expectations. <laughs> it, also, it also has to do with the fact that when Gutenberg was still the project before it became the block editor, a lot of people gave it low stars because it was still experimental right. code. And you know, people had applied it to their sites and had problems with it, and they were told, don't put this in production yet. Right, <laughs> right. So, but if you want to install the classic editor or Gutenberg, you can do that from, these are the plugins. Now, I do have the classic editor plugin on my blogs. Um, and the reason for that is both of the blogs that I write on I started before the block editor was released. So I have posts that were originally written in classic. One of the problems is that if you do want to convert your post from classic to the block editor, you have to do it one post at a time. There is not a way to convert like all of your posts at once. It's so one post at a time. So if, like me, you have one blog that has 200 posts on it, mostly written in classic and you want to convert them, how do you keep track like, <laughs> of where you are in that process? The classic editor lets you, um, plugin lets you do that. In your writing settings, which appear on the left-hand menu, um, you have the settings menu and then writing is underneath there. Allow users to switch editors. If you click that to yes, and this is actually, you can set a default editor here. So I've set my default to block, but allow them to switch editors, yes. When you do that, over here, this is my post screen. And you can see that next to each post, it tells you whether that post is in block editor or classic. So just that feature alone was enough for me to install the plugin because as I convert, that means I don't have to convert them in order or remember where I was. I can. I could convert posts in the order of what's the most popular, the things that people land on on my site the most, not worry about the things that nobody's read in five years, um, and I'll know which ones are converted and which ones aren't. So for me, I installed the Classic Editor plugin just for that feature alone. Yeah. Do you find that the conversions are uniform? Um, because I have one that I started in Classic, mm -hmm. 
and in the block editor, I've noticed that normally I'll, it'll come up as a larger text and I change it to normal. And then I notice that there's a difference in size. The older one was smaller. Uh, Do you find that that's consistent or is it hmm. a setting of that somewhere? I haven't noticed that. Um, but all of those settings are in my theme. So it may have to do with how it's translating like your text, whether it like if something that's a heading, for example, style sheet. It, yeah, it's coming from your style sheet or in my case, it's a theme setting where I set them all. So it's pulling the information from somewhere else. So that would be a reason why it wouldn't be consistent yeah, it, from so, classic. It's not much different, but I noticed on the phone that it, yeah. I saw both of them together, and I said, that's a little different. Yeah. Because it's continuous post. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't specifically noticed that. I haven't paid very close attention, but it makes sense to me that that would happen. Um, yeah, and I don't know, unless you set your theme settings to match classic, maybe that might work. But that's interesting. All right, so this is... The reason that um, I don't find the block editor, if you don't want to know how to code and you want to do your entire layout using blocks, I personally don't think the block editor is quite there yet. It doesn't give you a lot of options for customizing what your blocks look like, okay? Um, I'm, I'm about to start talking about the plugins, and as I do, we're going to be using columns blocks as an example so that you can see the same thing in multiple plugins. And so this is what happens when you are using the native block editor columns, okay? You have a few layout options in terms of the number of columns. Um, you can align where on the page and where in the blocks your content is going to appear. And then over on the right hand side, you have a couple of really basic, like how many columns are you going to have? But you'll see there's nothing really here that's gonna let you do something like control the color of the background of the column or whether or not it has borders or any of that kind of information. So to me, this is useful, like you can have columns, but if you really want to work with layout and design, this isn't going to be enough. And so block plugins. <coughs> there are a lot of block plugins, um, a lot. When I was first looking at plugins, I went on the WordPress group um, on Facebook and I looked to see what people were using and these five were the most common ones that came up as recommendations. And so this is where I started looking at, pl at, pl at block plugins. I looked at a lot more than this when I knew I was uh, going to do this um, presentation, but I think that these five cover sort of the universe of what options are. Um, and so you might want to look like, especially if you're working in a particular ecosystem of, um, like GoDaddy has a block plugin. So if you're working in that environment, you might want to look at their plugin and see if it has what you want. But other than that, it's really about what features do you need in a, in a block plugin. So to me, when I was first looking at this, I thought that what was gonna to matter to me the most was the types of blocks that were offered. Um, you know, columns blocks, feature grid blocks, you know, th there's a lot of different kinds of blocks and I thought I would ma that would matter the most to me. But what I found as I went along was what mattered to me the most were the types of blocks, yes, but only the basic layout and content blocks, pre-formatted blocks that have something like an author block, you know, it might have an author picture over here and some text over here. That's really just a column. And if I have columns, I can make that to my specifications. Whereas I found a lot of the pre-formatted blocks, yes, they have a little bit of pre-formatting, but it never seems to be exactly what I want, right? It, it's, they're using a, t a font that I don't like and, you can't, and I can't manipulate it or whatever. So ultimately what I found mattered to me the most were the basic layout and content blocks and the extent to which I could customize them in terms of um, design and colors and those kinds of things. All right, so, oh, the heading came off of this. 
the, of the five that I showed um, you, they all have free versions. Cadence and Stackable both have paid versions. Um, with Cadence, you get additional blocks, plus you get some additional features for certain blocks. With Stackable, you get all of the blocks in the free version. What you're paying for is additional customization options. So this is the basic um, layout kind of blocks. Um, and I'm just, I just basically want you to get a sense because you're going to be able to have these slides after Rob's going to send them out and you can look at them in more detail. But I just want you to get a sense of the options and kind of like look who has X's, just, just sort of like a general feeling. So these are content, things like images and galleries and who has what. And then this last one, these are pre-formatted blocks and these are kind of all over the place um, and different people call different things by different, the same thing by different names, you know. A testimonial block that has a picture and some text is pretty much the same thing as an author block that has a picture and some text. So they might call them by different names, but it has the same functionality. Um, but you can see here, there's like a wide variety of what's available. Okay, so this is cut off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, this is some of the things that you can look at when you're talking about customizing blocks. How do you align it on the page, in your page or post? Um, can you do borders? Can you do backgrounds? Do you ha have the ability to do additional CSS if you want to? Um, how do you divide the block? You know, can you put like a little wavy thing to separate it? Or um, what font can you use? Can you do overlays? How responsive are they? So when I'm thinking about customization, these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. So this is the advanced Gutenberg. And again, we're looking at columns blocks. So again, you see when you first add it, you have a lot of options here in terms of layout, more than you saw in the WordPress block. Um, and then you have a small menu that appears above the actual column block once you pick the number. And over on the right hand side, you see where your options are for how to customize that block. Um, and it, it's got some customization options. This is certainly more than um, you get with the native blocks. And also notice the responsive settings here, that everything that you're able to set in this block, you can set it separately for desktop, tablet, and phone. So you, you get the same set of settings and you can change it for each one. So you can completely customize the response, how responsive the block is. With Advanced Gutenberg, you do have the option to make global settings too. So that means that every time I pick a columns block, it'll come with certain defaults. So if you're working on the same website uh, and you know you want all of your columns to, to meet certain requirements, have certain alignments, you can set that in their um, global settings, and so then you don't have to do it every single time you do use that block. This is Atomic Blocks, and so this has the column settings that look similar to the WordPress. Um, you have a little bit fewer options over here. You have a little bit more options in terms of what you're able to do in terms of color and margin and all of that um, there, but there's no options here for responsive design. There's nothing in the block itself to let you set anything responsively. Cadence um, has, again, a lot of options. The pre-built library here is sections. Oh, I should also say Cadence, rather than calling theirs columns, they call it rows, which confused me at first. I thought they didn't have a columns block, and then when I opened up rows, I was like, oh, this is actually a column. <laughs> so if you click on pre-built library, it actually gives you an entire section of the website that if you want to do that, it has all kinds of like images and columns. It's a complex block with a lot of features in it. Um, and here they have, they should, they have responsive settings too. Did I not click on that? 
I think that, oh yes, it is up there um, at the very top. It has the little icons, it, which, so again, you can, every setting that's available, you can set it individually for desktop, laptop, and phone. Cadence, this is um, an interesting thing that they do. So these are global settings. Um, for, on the right-hand side is what you can do for global settings. The center column here, um, you can set who has the ability to make changes, what category of user on the site. So if somebody is the administrator or the editor or the author, you can restrict settings on the blocks based on their user category. So I don't have an application for that because the projects that I work on, I, I'm pretty much the only person working on them. But if you're working in a design environment or if you're delivering something to a client and you don't want them to screw around with stuff, you can make some settings here that will stop them from be, being able to make changes to the columns box or any block individually. This is stackable. Um, Stackable does not currently have a columns block. So this is the, their container. They're the only one of the ones I'm showing you today that don't currently have a columns block. It's on their list. It's supposed to be released at some point this year, but I don't know when. Um, so they have their menu divided into layout, style, and advanced. And so you can see that we have a wide variety. And I will say I do have the paid version. So some of the options here you're seeing are from the paid version. And that's here in the layout section. I think if you have the free version, you only get the basic and plain. Um, those other image, image two and image three, those are part of the paid version. And some, the extent to which you can do some of the colors and everything is also in the paid version. Their responsive design is a little bit different and they changed this with version two. When they, uh, version one, they had the same kind of thing where you clicked on you know, mobile, you clicked on desktop, um, tablet and a phone and could set all of the settings in there. But here, instead of doing that, they now, you can turn off a block. So if you see over on the right hand side there, it says hide on desktop, hide on tablet, hide on mobile. So that means if you need um, a responsive design and you're, you need something in this block to be different, you're going to have to make the block three times and then hide, hide it so that it only appears in the one that you want. So the block that appears on mobile, you would hide on tablet and desktop and so forth. So that's a little bit of a different approach um, that they have on the responsive design. And this one is ultimate add-ons. So, you know, the other ones that I showed you, you chose your column number when you, uh, the number of columns you needed when you clicked on the box, you know, when you first added the block, but in this one, you actually add it over in the menu over there you, is where you change the number of columns. But it's got a pretty good set of different um, sets of, of customization. So this is an example of a block that I did for the Florida Tropical Weavers Guild website. And this is, um, I have a list here, it's the a section block from Ultimate Add-ons, three headings blocks that are originally uh, are WordPress native blocks, and then the center section that where it says two nights all the way down to the information under there, that is a columns block, and then the checklist is an icon list, um, which is a reusable block that I created. And then this bottom, all, the double occupancy statement is also a reusable block that it, from a cadence header. So you can combine blocks. Problems, potential problems with using the block plugins. Compatibility. Um, there's a couple of ways that compatibility is an issue. One is if you're using multiple plugins. Um, I have seen problems where I wanted a wide width image inside of, a, of columns. So I have the columns set to wide width and then an image over on one column set to wide width, but they have different ideas of what wide width means. So the image extends beyond the borders of the column. Um, so that's one way you can have compatibility issues. Themes, can, you can also have some compatibility issues in themes. Again, I've primarily seen this with width 
issues. If your theme doesn't support wide width, you're certainly not going to have the option to make any of your blocks wide width. But I also had an issue where I was using a theme that did support wide width. And so I had an accordion and I set the accordion to wide width and that was fine. It did the headings and everything. But when I went to put text inside the drop down on the accordion, the text would only fill up the left hand side and there was all this white space over here. And that was because of a setting in the theme. They weren't carrying that wide width setting all the way through the full block. So um, that's one way it can show up. I recently at a, a meetup was talking to somebody and he was trying to make some changes on his website. He was having issues where um, text settings were being overridden based on what was in his theme. So he was making, he, he wanted to do a specific color and size of text and everything. And so he put in a heading block, but the theme settings for headings overrode what he put, put in the block. So those are some places where you may end up with compatibility issues. Speed. With five, oh, so these block plugins, when I looked at my GT matrix water, matrix waterfall, um, they load before the theme even loads. So when I have five of these plugins, cause I'm messing around with them and they're not all going to stay. Um, it's taken a long time for the site to load much longer than this site should take. Um, in addition, especially if you're going to use multiple of the plugins, they might be loading like font sets. So, you, so if they're both loading the same font set, you know, that's going to take some time and resources and speed. So that's just something to think about. It may, if your site is properly optimized, which I don't think that the Weaving Guild one is yet, I haven't done all of that work yet. It, maybe it's not going to be an issue for you, but it's just something to think about. Um, technological debt. What happens in five years when these plugins don't exist anymore? Um, that kind of scares me because this is a bunch of, I mean, that one post had 57 blocks on it, right? <laughs> so if I've used plugins very extensively on my website, what happens when those aren't available? So I've had a couple of experiences with that because as I was testing plugins, I installed them, I went through every single block that they had, put them in, manipulated them, and then I deleted plugins that I wasn't going to use anymore. So what I saw in my post is a message that said, convert to HTML. So I click on that, nothing really happened. The other thing that happened was with Cadence, I had a button and um, I have the pro version of Cadence and somehow my uh, license key had gotten deleted and I didn't realize it. And I needed to copy those buttons and put them in a different spot. So I went to do that and I got an error message and it somehow like those buttons disappeared. And so I ended up having to, uh, when I figured out what happened, put the license key in and had to restore that post in order to get the buttons back. So that's just a couple of small instances of what I've seen as possibilities if those plugins don't exist. And so um, that's one of the things that kind of scares me about working with the block plugins because you don't know what the future holds and if they'll be there forever and how broken will your website be um, when they're not there. So I'm going to talk about reusable blocks. One of the really cool things about blocks is every single block can be reusable. Every block that you have in your post, you have the option of making it reusable. And it essentially gives you the ability to copy and paste that block to any other post or page on your site. It helps you build faster. It builds your website faster. I'll uh, give you an example of that in a little bit. And it makes sure that your content is consistent when it needs to be. Um, it may, so with the site that I was building, um, we have an annual conference and that's a lot of the content that was on the site is for the annual conference. I want to make sure that every page that has pricing on it has the identical pricing. So if I make a reusable block that has the pricing information in it, I know it's always going to be the same uh, as long as I did it correctly in the first place. So, uh, so layout is the other reason. Um, we have 
11 mini classes that happen on Thursday night and 11 two and a half day workshops. Each of those has its own page. And we want people, when they're clicking through to read the information, we want that to be displayed in a consistent format. So I can create this accordion block that has all of the same headers. They're all in the same order. There's no information in the drop downs because that'll change from one to another. But every time I start a page, I can just drop in this reusable block that has all of the basic information and then just edit what needs to be edited for that particular class. So in order to create a reusable block, any block in your post, you click on those three little dots there and you have this drop down and here it says add to reusable blocks. It then pops up a little thing for you to name it. Do be careful in thinking about what you're going to name it because that's how you're going to find it in the future. So you want it to be descriptive, but you also want to make sure it's not um, that if it's something that is going to be repetitive. So this conference happens every year. If I name something uh, workshop info, like I typed right there, well, workshop info for right what year? When I go to redo the site for 2021 to put that information on it, like workshop info is maybe not going to be helpful to me. I probably need to put 2020 workshop info so that it's sort of future proofing and just have to think about how that will work for you. Can you go back in and edit yeah. that? Yes. When we talk about editing blocks, yes. I will say blocks are essentially custom post types. And so you have a way to edit. It's not, and I am going to talk about editing blocks. It's not, it's kind of weird. Um, Right now, they're working on integrating it better. And that, and that should change actually later this year. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so in order to insert a reusable block into your post, this same, you press that same plus menu that you use to add any block, and you have to scroll all the way down. It's the very last option on the list, reusable block. And then you get a list of all of your options. Um, choose the one you want. Now, when you place the block in there, you have the option of keeping it as a reusable block or converting it to a regular block. And the reasons why you might want to do that, have, think about whether you're using it for content or whether you're using it for layout. With a reusable block, if you edit the reusable block, that change propagates to all instances of the block. So yes, you're going to want that if it's something like the pricing scenario, right? You want the pricing to be the same all the way across the board. But for the layout scenario, I don't want changes to propagate across every instance because each of those pages is individual and need individual information. So in that case, I'm going to convert it to a regular block and then those changes will not be propagated across to every other instance of the block. So once you placed the block in your site, click on the three little arrows and it's about three quarters of the way down um, underneath, well, it's right over here, convert to regular block. And then, so when you click on that, it's no longer a reusable block. It's no longer linked to any other blocks. It's just like, it's just a normal block. So, Blocks can be compound in a couple of different ways. We've already looked at this, where it's a container and there's lots of other blocks inside of the container. Over here, this, each of those blocks is an individual block, right? And we're creating a layout with individual blocks. This is important because if you want something like the layout option over here to be reusable, you have to do it in a little bit of a different way. You have to do it through the editing process as opposed to this, where you can make this block right in um, your poster page. So we're going to talk about editing, and I'll explain why this is. Now, theoretically, you can edit a reusable block right in your post. I don't do that. And the reason I don't do that is because, especially if you're making a lot or complex changes, my experience is that what'll happen is that WordPress starts to do an autosave and it sort of refreshes everything and it doesn't save the changes that you just made. Maybe they'll improve that. But because it happened to me enough, it got really annoying. So I don't edit um, my reusable blocks in actually in the post. Instead, 
I click, if you, this is the uh, toolbar that's above your post. These three little dots that are all the way over on the right, click on that and then click on down here, manage all reusable blocks. When you go to the all reusable blocks, oops, no, I missed a page, I missed a, oh, no, it's right there. You get this screen. So that looks a lot like your posts, you know, when you have your list of posts or your list of pages, that's exactly what it looks like. So this is why I'm saying it's kind of, it's basically like a custom post type, but it's just sort of hidden right now how you get to that menu. So then you find the one that you want to edit, click on it and open it up. And you're basically now in a post that is just your reusable block. So this is where if you're going to do something that has multiple individual blocks in it, like the layout example that I just showed you, you want to edit it and do it all in here. You can create layouts for an entire page this way. You can make templates this way. Um, but you want to do it through the editing function. And this is when you were asking if you can change the name, you theoretically can change the name here. I'm not sure what that does to posts that, to blocks that you've already put in your posts, how, if it renames them all automatically, that's an interesting question. I don't know, but, but this is how you would rename a block. All right. This did not translate very well when we switched it from PowerPoint to uh, Google Slides, but this is one page, all right? So what I did is I just copied and pasted it all the way down so you could see the complete layout of a page um, on this site, and this is the main conference page. Every single thing in here is a block. Paragraph, button block, uh, that's an icon list, um, Everything that's like the aqua blue color is a reusable block. These are post grid blocks um, and then headings. And so workflow for creating this site, I did the individual pages for each of the mini classes and workshops first. Then I did the layout of this page, right? And that's, this is the 2020 conference page. Now, everything else that appears on this menu over here, the schedule, the mini classes, the workshops, because I had done this page first and I used the reusable blocks for the text content, it took less than 15 minutes to make all the rest of these pages because I could just make the page, put in my reusable block, put in a post grid for the ones that needed it, done. So this took some time but doing the rest of it was very simple because of the reusable blocks. Now we have all these blocks, how are we going to manage working with them? There are a few options. WordPress has some tools in built in. They also do have a, a something new that is currently scheduled for release in August, which is going to give you um, something in your main menu bar on the left hand side of your screen when you're in your post that where you work out of all the time. I haven't, I've seen just a couple of images of it, so I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. But for now, these are the tools that you have available. When you click on this, uh, your three little dots over there in the up, upper right and click on block manager, you then get this list, which has every single block that you have, um, not your reusable blocks. It has, every single block that is either WordPress native or part of the plugins that you installed. And if you know that you're not going to use a particular block ever, you can just uncheck it from this list. And so when you're placing blocks in your post, that one that you unchecked is just not going to show up on your list. So it just streamlines what you're looking at when you're working in, a, in your posts. Um, and that is, temporary, you can go back here and recheck something if you decide you need it on your list. So this is built into WordPress. The plugins themselves have options within them to manage the blocks that are in the plugins. So you can deactivate blocks. One thing I am not sure of is whether this makes a difference in how quickly the plugin loads. I don't know if this means they're not actually loading the code. So it could make it load faster. I don't know. That's one of the questions that I have that I haven't found an answer to yet. But so 
this is showing you cadence blocks. This is showing you ultimate add-ons. You just click to activate and deactivate. And again, you can go back and change this at any time if you change your mind about what you want to use. Advanced Gutenberg plugin has uh, the ability for you to create profiles. And this will, this lets you turn off blocks um, for specific people. You can do it based on their user role, or you can do it for anybody who has credentials for your site individually. Um, and so you can, if you don't want them to be able to use um, the headings block in WordPress, you just check uncheck it there, and they don't, they no longer have access. So that's on a user level. Um, and that is everything. Do we have questions? It's a lot. <laughs> but I really love the block editor. I mean, I, re I did that in the entire FTWG site in using the blocks, all of the layout, no code, no nothing. So I don't know how to do any of those codes. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Are you sure no one has any questions? Yes. Yeah. Right yes. You got her here, right? Where's I mean, my email's there too. <laughs> um, you mentioned when you're doing converting from things to classes. Yeah. Is there a way that it goes smoothly, or you mentioned something about it has to be like the Y with something, otherwise it's not going to work? So when you, those are two different things. So when you're converting from Classic to the block editor, I have really not had any problems. When you're doing that conversion, you're using the WordPress native tools, both the classic and the block editor. Where I've had issues with with is with the plugins. I've not had any of those issues using the WordPress native tools. Yeah. Other questions? That's good. I noticed that you build, so you build your entire site with blocks? Mm-hmm. I didn't use any CSS or HTML, or JavaScript, or PHP, or SQL. None of the above. Yeah. So you mentioned the blocks are quite simple. So were you able to do a lot of like interactions with them? What do you mean? Like, for example, like on hover events, and click events, and this and that? Oh, yeah. Some of them do have that functionality. They don't all. You know, it depends on the, on the plugins. I haven't um, done that level of complexity on this site with the blocks, but they do have options, some of them. And I also, I did, you can actually do CSS on all of them, yeah. uh, but I, I should have mentioned Stackable actually drops the headings in for you already. So you have all your headings in, you just have to put your changes under the right heading. Um, that's the only one that does that. But you have the, uh, the bottom of your right hand margin, there's the, it's always, actually it was in Classic Editor too, where it had the attributes yeah. button. They have something now that says CSS, so you can make CSS changes on any block individually. Thank you, again, Karen. That was a, a very fascinating. I, I love that. Uh, uh, I, I personally have not used the block editor all that much. I kind of avoided it when I first was Gutenberg because I had so much on my plate. I was like, I cannot beta test this. Way too much stuff going on. I regretted that <laughs> because now I'm behind the I'm way behind the eight ball. <clears throat> but this is very helpful, and I, I love that there it's it's plug and playable where you can extend well it's extensible is what I'm looking for where other vendors can go in and they can create their own block editor systems and mm -hmm. it's it's just like Legos you know and that's 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 the kind of the purpose of the whole situation. I do know that they are that uh, Automatic is building a page builder from mm -hmm. Gutenberg, and everybody knew that that was the next yeah. logical step in how things were going to go from there. So. Really excited for that because at some point I would like to just rely on only uh, what's available in WordPress and not have to do with um, other page builders. I love page builders because they make my job easier, make it <laughs> quick. You know, uh, I don't like to make themes from scratch because I'm not the best coder in the world. <laughs> it takes me a little while and I have to keep looking <laughs> stuff up because my brain just does not hold on to syntax very well. Um, but you know, having something native to WordPress that just you know flows right into it, and you don't have to add extra stuff, is is uh, kind of a nirvana for me. You know when they want to release that? 
Uh, not soon. I think it's going to be the next year or two. Yeah. So I think they're just trying to get everything normalized uh, so far, and then you know get everybody moved over from classic to uh, the block editor before they start playing around with page building. So, uh, but you know they've surprised us before. They surprised us with Gutenberg in uh, 2018. They just they rolled it out in December 2018, and people were not ready for it. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of made kind of made some folks mad, but uh, it turned out to be a good thing. So. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Um, so I just have a few uh, housekeeping um, items that I always, uh, forgive me if you've seen this before, uh, this is more for the new people. Um, we tend to have uh, a mixed group come in. We have a few regulars, but then we, for the most part, it's people who've never been here before. We're trying to, to build the group, uh, have more people sh show up every single time. So if you can you know, set aside your third Thursday of every month uh, from six to seven, that's when we do this. Uh, we also have a first Friday, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, we, we, we purposely put them on first Fridays and third Thursdays so people could add it to their calendar as a recurring event. Just stick it in there and, and then just make sure you, you come over, because the more people we have, the more fun we can have, the more things we can do. Uh, we, can get, we can gather sponsors who will pay for food and all kinds of things like that. So we're, we're trying to, to grow um, along with the other group in Orlando. Um, so finally, we've been working on it for like a year, and we just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. So, I'm just going to do a quick tour of this, uh, just so you can kind of see what's available here. We're going to be adding a lot more. We're going to be adding tutorials and other content that it'll, it'll make it a site you'll want to return to. Um, like our videos will be posted there. We'll do follow-ups, um, stuff like that. So I'm just going to let this load real yeah, quick. Yeah, you're still going to post your videos yes. other places? Yeah, we're going to post them as, uh, in several places so that we have coverage on social media. And on, uh, eventually I want to put our videos on WordPress TV. Um, there's a website called WordPress.tv where people post their meetup videos, and we're going to eventually build our library there as well. Um, but we do want to have them on this website. So it's just a, it's a, right now it's just an informational page where you can just quick, click, click over to meetup from here and, and RSVP to the latest thing. Eventually we're going to have a plugin in here where we can display what all the upcoming meetups are. Um, so this tells you who we are and what we're about. It also has all of the um, information about where we meet. So the first Fridays we meet at uh, Axe and Coffee, um, and there's the address and the time. So if you ever wonder what time it was and you just couldn't remember, just come to our site, and it'll all be there on the home page. Um, all the maps, how to get there, and then this location here, which is a little, admittedly, a little hard to find. Anybody have a hard time getting here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> there's two ways into into uh, this area here. This is where we are, but. Uh, I've got directions uh, here. You can actually click on this to zoom in. So there's two ways in. You come in from the north, or you can come in from the south through either of these entrances here. Um, this one's a little quicker, actually, because you don't have to meander through all these neighborhoods. But you can actually zoom in. So if you're on your phone and you're like, how did I get in there again? You can just zoom in real quick. So um, that's kind of nice. People ask a lot of questions about how to get here. There's the parking areas are all there. So there's parking all along these streets here. So. Um, just more information on how big, and so this is for people who don't know what WordPress is, but if they don't know what it is, how are they here? <laughs> um, so we are looking for sponsors, you know, uh, anybody who wants to have their company name featured as part of one of our meetups, um, you can sponsor an event, so a third Thursday or a first Friday or a series of them, whatever you want to do. If you have a business, you want to get your name out there, we'll, we'll put your logo on our site, just to say that you've sponsored us at one point, so um, there's that as well. Um, and then here at the bottom is where you can join the, the meetup if you haven't already joined it. So you, how many of you saw uh, our, our event tonight in your WordPress dashboard? Better raise hands. Two. And how many people saw it on meetup.com? Oh. That was actually flipped from what I thought it would be. Uh, that's great. That's wonderful. It looks like we're getting really good coverage either way. Let me just jump back over to... I got an email. You did? Yeah. From WordPress or from Meetup. Oh, from Meetup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do send out the, the notifications that way too. So, so here's our uh, next meetups, uh, March sixth, eight thirty to ten at uh, Axe and Coffee in Winter Garden, and then our third Thursday one, like this meeting, is March nineteenth from six o'clock. We do have a little social that we meet over next door at uh, thirty three and Melt. Uh, you saw me with my food over there. <laughs> so we just we get, the fries are great, the jalapeno poppers are mm, really good. So they, they let you bring your food in here, uh, and then food you just take and drinks. food and drinks. Yes. So if you want to get a beer or wine or anything, you can bring it in here, and then just take your glass back when you're done. So we they they make it convenient for us. Um, 
Upcoming work camps, we have Work Camp Miami, uh, February 28th through March 1st. I don't know if tickets are sold out for that. Um, they probably are, but check anyway. <laughs> so just uh, Google Work Camp Miami 2020 and you'll, you'll find it. <clears throat> um, there's the URL in case you want to write it down. Or, um, and then we have uh, Word Camp US will be uh, October 27th through the 29th this year, um, probably in St. Louis again, I believe. So, really great place to have one. No dates for Orlando. We actually do. Oh, okay. Yes, oh. we actually have a date now. We were having a hard time nailing down a venue, but right now, if nothing there changes, we go, we uh, November 14th through 15th, oh, it's only a two day this year. Not at Rosen. We're going to do Full Sail University. They have they have a really big facility there, and they have lots of great video capabilities that I think the team wanted to work on doing, using this year. So it's going to be a lot better for WordPress.tv coverage. Um, so yeah, Full Sail University. Only two. There were only two days for us available at their venue. So usually it's a three day, like Thursday, Friday. No, Friday, Friday Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. I wish they'd do Thursday, Friday, Saturday because Sundays are full up for me. Um, so the, the that's the tentative date. So don't. Don't pencil it in just yet. Just remember, you know, around that time. We do need volunteers. I have a form here for WordCamp volunteer signups. So I'm actually starting the recruiting for this now. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you put your name on here and you'll hear from me like in, I don't know, August or something where we'll start to train everybody. Uh, but we just want to gather some names early for that. Um, um, we also have a, just since I'm over here, we have a speaker sign-up sheet here. So if, if you do want to do what, what Karen did today or what I sometimes do or what other people do and just get up and give a topic, it's great practice for public speaking and you don't have to be an expert. You, you just have to know something about WordPress, right? There's all levels of people here. There's beginners all the way up to advanced. And so um, nobody laughs at you or anything like that. We, we just, that's what the, the purpose of the group is to get people the chance to stand up and, and share what they know. Um, and over here we have a post-it note pile. If you have a question or a topic you'd like covered, um, write it down here and we'll either cover it as a, as a WordPress meetup presentation or we'll post a tutorial on the website or do, do a video of some kind, something like that. So that's there for you. There's swag here too. <laughs> um, so take some of those pins because I'm going to have those for eternity. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we have a Facebook page, West Orlando with WP. Um, on Facebook, we have our website here. Um, the Facebook page is where you'll see the video go up. So if you if you join that Facebook page or you like the page, you'll see the video pop up in your feed when I post it or when Brian posts it actually. Um, so we have uh, this is our meetup URL, and we also have a Slack. Do you guys know what Slack is? Mm -hmm. it's just a little chat program, and we have channels in there. Uh, so. If you do need help with something, our community is available to help you. Just pop into Slack, join our group, ask questions. We're there for you. Um, Linda.com has free courses for uh, Lake and uh, yeah. Yeah. Seminole and Orange. Every time. Seminole and Orange. <laughs> Lake does not have it, so if you're from Lake County, sorry. Um, but you know, maybe get a friend to let you log in through their their uh, account. There's also WP Beginner has uh, a bunch of tutorials and if you're looking for a WordPress job we have a link there for you for the Indeed search on that. Um, and here. Oh, I think I went back too far. No, oh, that's right. So we are looking for people to, to help us. Uh, right now our organizer is WordPress and WordCamp so they advertise our meetup in the WordPress Pro Network that's how some of you found us. Um, they pay for our subscription fee, they pay for our venue, so they, they're, they're paying for all of this that we're sitting in here today. Um, they audit our activity through RSVPs, which is why we ask people to be accurate. Like if you're not going to be able to come, be sure to cancel your RSVP so we'll have a head count. Because uh, they do check that and uh, if, we have, if we fall below a certain head count then they stop sponsoring us. So <laughs> that's another reason we're asking people to keep coming regularly. <laughs> Up and you weren't expecting to. Right. Let's go in yes. And say that you were here. Exactly. 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 That would be awesome if you would do that. Because um, I don't always remember people's names. Sometimes I don't even remember faces. I just like I get home and I'm like, wait, who was there? Oh, crap. I don't know. And then some people just come and they didn't RSVP, which is fine. We just need you to hit that button. Um, so anyway, um, they also give us swag, which is great. <laughs> That's where those buttons came from. So you'll find us um, in your WordPress dashboard. Uh, hang on. Yep, so there's a WordPress dashboard. You'll find us just, if you do type me up WordPress, it'll show you where all the local ones are, and we show up in there as well. So we're, we're everywhere. Um, so
So to grow the group, we want to, uh, you know, the more we bring in, the more fun we can have. Um, tell your friends and please volunteer. Here are the volunteer positions available. Um, we would love to have two more co-organizers, so we have a committee of four co-organizers. Right now it's Hope and I. Um, so if anybody wants to volunteer for that, there's the sheet. <laughs> Um, we need an assistant organizer, event organizer, content guru, just to help uh, update the website. Um, and then we need WordCamp volunteers. So here's what the roles are and how much they require. Um, I won't read the entire slide to you, but you can just kind of see what it involves. So that's the co-organizer role. Uh, the assistant organizer uh, supports the co-organizers in doing some of the uh, additional work that needs to be done. Um, we also have event organizers who kind of focus on each of the individual events, making sure they get set up right and things like that. Um, this this event pretty much takes care of it, takes care of itself, but you know we're gonna we're gonna add other events like um, uh, community coding and hackathons and educating kids and stuff like that. So you know we need people to help with that kind of thing. Um, content guru, just somebody to help us write content for the website uh, to kind of attract more people, and that's that's pretty much it. At this point, so any other questions? Uh, we're gonna right, what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna mingle and, and talk and stuff. You guys can sign up over here, add your questions to the list, um, and just you know collaborate, ask questions, do what you want for the next. Hi, Karen. Yeah, that's right. So, but thanks again to Karen. Thanks to Brian for doing the video stuff thanks, today. Guys. <laughs>